A leader in the drone space has upped the ante again, this time with the introduction of the Phantom 4. All right, hey folks, it's a big day in the drone industry and for all of us Phantom 3 owners, it's kind of a depressing day because the, the Phantom 4 from DJI was just released today. I'm sitting here with my good friend and a former DJI employee, Mr. Eric Chang, who in many ways is and has become kind of the face of the drone industry because kind of grew up with it. Eric, uh, we pre-planned this interview because you know, obviously everyone got the, the invite last week that this thing was going down today. So we pre-planned this to kind of run through it. You've got an awesome post up on your your website at Drone Farm. So drone.farm. So people can go and check that out. And hopefully that's probably where they're watching this at if you embed it. But <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I just want to go through this thing. I'm looking at I'm looking at your blog post right now. I also have the DJI site up there. The the main thing that I was looking for, I was hoping that they were going to add in here was collision or object detection, collision avoidance, so that it would at least at least not run into trees or or crash or people. And it looks like they added. <laughs> it looks like they added that in there. Is this? Uh, is that? Was it? Did they do exactly what you think was going to happen? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, it's been really interesting because since CES, so at CES there were there was a lot of activity around uh, sensing the world around drones. Yeah. You know, so the, you know, it's very common to have technology kind of move. You know, you see all these players moving in the same directions towards the same goals. And what we're seeing now is all of them kind of arriving at this point when drones are getting object avoidance, you know, basically object detection, which they can use for anything they want. Um, in this case with the Phantom 4, it's, uh, I mean, they did a really good job in integrating uh, st basically stereo vision. You know, yeah. So they have stereo cameras on the front, stereo cameras on the bottom. And as we know, as humans with two eyes, stereo is very important for sensing depth. Yeah. Um, and that's what they're, that's what they're doing. It's very easy to basically recreate the world, uh, you know, wherever they're looking in 3D, which allows them to identify objects that are close, which, which you might, in your case, maybe <laughs> be, be about to hit. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, not anymore. I'm getting better. It, it, it's, it's sort of weird. So you, this, this guy came out, I bought my Phantom 3, I don't know, three or four months ago, still learning how to fly it. And I still love it. This one came out, and my first knee-jerk reaction was, oh, crap, now my Phantom 3 is now obsolete, and I need to upgrade to the Phantom 4. I don't, I don't think that's the case. This one looks awesome, but it looks, it looks like the you don't need to be that good of a pilot anymore. Is that true with these? Because they've got the tap, and you can tap to go to locations. You can tap and have it follow a particular set of pixels. <laughs> It'll follow that around the screen. So is, is the, the days of piloting over? No, the days of piloting are not over. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think the the issue with this industry is that a lot of people don't want to pilot. You know, those of yeah. us who have been practicing a lot like to pilot because we have, we've, I mean, I feel like I have a lot of control over the camera when it's in the air. Mm -hmm. um, most people who are competent would never give up manual piloting. They don't want to give it up. And now I think they would give it up if these systems were able to do things that they weren't able to do uh, manually, which is the case for most pilots. Yeah. You know, so I... You know, I think it, we're getting there. You know, the Phantom 4. So let's just break down what the Phantom 4 does. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it, it's very similar to the Phantom 3 Professional in that it has the same sensor. It has improved glass. Uh, it shoots at 120 frames per second now in, at 1080. So, you know, a little bit more slow-mo if you're interested in that. Yeah. Um, and the camera system is essentially, I mean, it's effectively unchanged. You know, the gimbal is mo much better integrated. It has dual motors for controlling pitch, which, you know, helps stability. Uh, so they say, um, and so I think a lot of people were, were fairly disappointed that the camera didn't get that much better. Um, but I think the camera's already, it's pretty good for its size and there aren't camera packages that size that are much better, you know, yeah. so it's very hard to push cameras better than that right now anyway. Um, so this, this release is really all about, uh, giving your drone senses, you know, giving it more eyes, uh, more, um, more knowledge about its its surrounding while it's flying, yep. and that's a pretty hard thing to do. You know that that involves stereo cameras, it involves onboard processing in real time, uh, and object detection. I mean, if you um, 
draw a rectangle around a person, it recognizes that that's a person and it knows how to track that person. Even if the person turns sideways, you know, presents a profile, it's crazy. It's cycling, you know, they, they sort of programmed in some behaviors and, um, uh, you know, some intelligence around what you're, what it is that you're tracking. So it's pretty cool. And it's, but, but I think, you know, it's a, f- it's a first release. Mm-hmm. And it, from what I've seen, which is very little of, of actually being out there in the field with, uh, the, with the Phantom four, uh, it works pretty well. And that should never be confused with it works all the time. And I think, you know, in with drones, since you're talking about something that's flying through the air, uh, and you end up with a catas- catastrophic, uh, you know, result if you crash into something, um, you just can't assume that it's going to work all the time. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, so I think, you know, it's, it's, it's the same issue that I think autonomous cars are going to deal with. You know, are you able to ever really let go? And if you aren't able to stay off the sticks all the time, uh, then you have to be able to pilot, you know, otherwise when that thing goes wrong, you're going to lose your aircraft. Yeah. Right? And, so, and, and for me, I don't, I don't, you know, maybe down the line, like you said, it, it's great to have the facility or the capability to say, okay, you know, I'm doing some aerials of this house and I want to do, do a 360, which it can, you know, the Phantom 3 could actually do that, but to have it track an object and have it fly 360s around that object while that object is moving and stay on that. I think that's great. But I, like you said, I don't think the the skill set of being a competent UAV or drone pilot are, are going away. And the, the big thing for me is, like you said at the beginning, the collision avoidance. Like, I don't I want to be able to fly. I want to learn how to fly really well. Um, and then if something happens, I want the drone or the aircraft to have the intelligence not to put itself in harm's way. So if it runs out of battery. Instead of beelining it back to me through some trees, it should not do that. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I, I mean, I I wrote up sort of my, um, you know, my summary for whether people should buy this, <laughs> buy a Phantom Four at, yeah. at the end of the post. Um, but basically, I think you do have to be able to pilot. And I mean, I view it as being as collision avoidance being an insurance policy. You know, in that if I if my drone goes into return to home, I don't want to hit something on accident because there might be an obstacle in the way. Um, something might happen. You know, I might lose. Um, you know, let's say the app crashes and I lose sight of the drone, uh, you know, from an FPV point, point of view, um, it might be difficult to, to tell how far things are away. So, you know, basically if something bad happens, you want it to automatically avoid things if it can. Um, and I think in some cases it's okay if you want to use it to follow you, you know, mm-hmm. basically if you're in an obstacle free environment, like you're in the desert and you're, you know, you're in a car driving at 30 miles an hour, that's a great application or sports that happen on big fields. Um, things like that, I think are, are perfect for follow me, um, over the water works well. If you're capable of retrieving the drone, which, mm-hmm. you know, piloting typically is required uh, for, for overwater retrieval. Um, but I wouldn't recommend buying this if you're looking for something that will follow you through, you know, an obstacle laden <laughs> course. Right. And, you know, this is, I'm really glad that DJI did not do the sort of mountain biking through the forest kind of scenario, because that's not a good application of drones right now. You know, I think maybe if we look five years forward, there will be drones that are nearly impossible to crash, uh, but this is not it. Yeah, but it's getting there. It's a step in the right direction. And, the, and, the, and the, the industrial design obviously has been updated. It looks much sleeker. They use different materials to make it lighter. They've increased the battery capacity up to what, like they added with 10 minutes or so to the, the overall battery capacity. Is that, are those things like the, the look of it? Yeah, it looks sleeker. It looks like a brand new product. Um, the battery is fatter, so it's more capacity. The main thing that struck me when I saw the photos this morning was the redesign of the gimbal. So the gimbal looks like much of the guts for it are now inside the body of the aircraft. Is that is that correct, or did they just do some magic and, and change the engineering around? No, I think it's um, the bottom is, is what I noticed as well, mm-hmm. in that it's much more integrated. You know, the, the Phantom 3 was very well integrated from a performance point of view, but the gimbal was basically stuck on and with a ribbon cable attached to it. Yeah. Um, and the only thing holding it in place were vibration damping balls, you know, these, these rubber balls. So you could literally, you could just rip the gimbal off if you wanted. Yeah. Um, and uh, in this case, it's been much more tightly integrated. You're right. A lot of the camera has been pulled up into the body of the Phantom. That's where the micro SD uh, card slot and the micro USB port are now. They're, they're right in the body of the Phantom. Good, good. Um, and, and it's, I think it gives them a much 
you know, much better control over the structure of the phantom, making it stronger. Um, but that integration does mean that it will be potentially very difficult to just buy a new gimbal uh, if something goes wrong. Yeah. Uh, I don't think DJI has ever made it easy to just buy a new gimbal anyway uh, yeah. for phantoms. Mm-hmm. You know, they do consider a phantom to be a fully integrated system. So if something goes wrong, you have to send it in anyway. So I, I think the integration is probably a good move. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, as I was, I was discussing this with a friend of mine earlier, like I said, and, and the, where I netted out at, and this was before I even read your article was, I'm still happy with my Phantom three pro. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to continue to learn to fly on it. If I should crash it, I may consider, you know, beyond repair, I may consider getting a Phantom four, but right now my plan is to skip the Phantom four and wait for the Inspire 2. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. hopefully this magic will make its way into the Inspire 2 and I'll be ready for it. So we'll have kind of a convergence there. So, no, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that's probably a, a good plan. You know, if you are willing to learn how to pilot and you're careful, um, uh, or $1,400 is just too much money to spend, um, and the Phantom 3s are extremely good deals right now. I mean, the Phantom 3 Advance is running under $800. The Professional is running under $1,000 now. Um, those, those are the sweet spots now because you can buy almost two Advanced, you know, Phantom 3 Advance for the price of one Phantom 4, or you could get a fully kitted out Phantom 3 Professional with extra batteries in a case. Um, and you can get them. You know, I think the Phantom 4 is going to be in really short supply for the next, say, month, at least month. Yeah. Batteries may, I mean, if, if history repeats itself, batteries will be almost impossible to get for a while. Right. Um, so I think, you know, there's, there's some room for frustration if you're an early adopter, just like there always is room for frustration for early adopters. Yes. Um, but, but I think you can't really go wrong. I mean, the extra money you spend in a Phantom 4 gives you all these new sensors. Right now, they let you track things. They, you know, they have, uh, uh, collision avoidance and for emergencies or, or as a feature, if that's something that, that you, <laughs> you want to test. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you test and, that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think it's, it's pretty cool. And, and for me, the, the main, the main thing I got out of the launch today was that the game has changed for consumer drones. I mean, we are, you know, the Phantom four getting stereo vision and obstacle avoidance for $1,400 means that any product that comes out around that price point that doesn't have it is just going to be that much weaker. Yeah. You know, yeah. so the, the baseline for consumer drones has gone way up. It's likely that, you know, with Qualcomm and Intel put and NVIDIA now putting infrastructure into drones um, that basically do stereo vision and obstacle avoidance and 3D mapping, I think at the next CES, every drone will have these sorts of features in. And if they don't, no one's going to buy them. It's such a great time to be in this 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 industry. I want to call it a hobby, but it's it, it feels wrong to call to call this stuff a hobby because it's it's you know so much more than just a hobby. So speaking of hobbies, the the Phantom Three Professional they dropped the price on that to nine hundred ninety eight bucks, uh, which you know kind of hit me a little hard because I just <laughs> <laughs> I just bought mine. And you mine, bought it months ago. <laughs> Remember the, the product cycle is like a year right I now. Know, or less, I so. know. I know. I <laughs> know. This is sour grapes. Uh, but anything technology, you know, it's, you're buying, you're, you're basically buying it for a short period of time and then the next one's going to come out and obviate yours. Um, but this one, this was 998 bucks. And what surprised me was like, I was reading the rumor sites last week about what this might be. And they, most people had pegged the price for the Phantom 4 at 1700 bucks. And they, this one came out and it's what, 1400, 1300? Yeah, 1400, 1399. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty good. That's a good price, right? It's a good price. I mean, it's hard to cram that much new technology into a product um, and not raise the price that much. Remember the Phantom 3 Professional when it came out was not that much cheaper. Yeah. Um, so, you know, very close to the same price. So, okay, last question. Is Eric Chang buying a Phantom 4? <laughs> Uh, I, I may buy one. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I mean, I'm, I'm flying Phantom threes right now and I'm really happy with them and I'm mostly a manual pilot. I mean, I like the control I have, uh, and I, and I feel like I can fly them well. So, um, I'm not sure how much th- I, I would get personally out of a Phantom four, um, other than 120 frames per second, mm-hmm. uh, which sometimes I, I want. Um, and, and actually sport mode, you know, I think sport mode is, is really what I'm most interested in because it increases the maximum speed of the Phantom to something like 47 miles an hour or something. So is it, a, is it a racing drone now? Can we, can it, can it be in that category? <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been done. You know, I think it's, it's a really good, 
first time racer because you can let go of the sticks and, and not, uh, you know, not crash into anything. Yeah. Um, I think real FPV racers would probably be offended, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's certainly something that, that could, would be a lot of fun. So I think, you know, the increased performance of sport mode is the thing that would, would interest me in a Phantom four, but I think I'm, I'm going to do what you did. You know, I'm, I'm really happy with my Phantom threes. Now I, I don't think the output is going to change if I'm out shooting with a Phantom four instead yeah. of a Phantom three. Um, and if something happens to my Phantom three, then maybe I'll get a Phantom Four. Right. Yeah. That's that's my plan of action. I'm, I would assume that's what DJI is thinking too. You know, people. This will be. And if you're the other thing is if you're just jumping into the space, uh, my question to you would be: Okay, Phantom Three Professional is only a thousand dollars now versus fifteen hundred for this. Which one should I go for? Should it be the Phantom Three or should I just go all in, save for a couple extra weeks and get the Phantom Four? Well, again, I think it depends on whether you're going to use those extra features. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think. The kind of insurance policy of obstacle avoidance costing four hundred dollars is you know that might be a tough sell. It, it depends how how lazy you want to be as a pilot. Um, but I think if you need it to track a subject and and that's part of how you what, how you want to use a drone, there's really no no question. You have to get a Phantom Four. Love it, love it, Eric Chang. Thank you for for doing this. Hot on the heels of this release, I think this is a coup. This is this is the first video interview that you've done since the release of the uh, of the new Phantom Four. Yeah, you since the release this morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're on it. This is Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yes, it is the first one. Awesome, yeah. cool, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and hopefully, sometime soon, we can go flying together. I don't believe it. There's no way. It took me like two years to get you to get one anyway. <laughs> hey, I'm good now. I got it. Now I'm in the mix and I love my drone. So. Okay, okay. Let's go flying. All right. Cool, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. You can learn more about the Phantom 4 by heading over to DJI.com. Or if you want the inside scoop, head over to Eric's blog at drone.farm.